So, I was interrupted during part one of my saga. I had things going on here, you know, for the Eat My Short segment. And this is a part two. So, the drama started. A nosy fucking relative with a big nose got into my business. And my business is my business. It's my mother's business. That's the only two people's business it is in this world. So I come up with a brilliant idea, you know. Now, normally what I would do to handle business like that, somebody gets their big nose in my business, I'll just break it. And to be honest with you, I've wanted to do that for a long time. I, I don't care for this particular relative. They're an asshole. But I come up with a better plan that's slightly more entertaining and probably going to get me some fun responses here in the comments section so I can hear your angry typing or your hysterical typing, just go right ahead and just get the keyboard ready. It's going to be a fun one. So I got the brilliant idea, right? Work out a cash basis, because we can't trust our bank account right now. We might have an auto pay bill come out of it. My mom's not in a position to change banks right now, because of our rent and the way things are set up, it's electronically taken. So the day before it's taken out, we're going to put the cash in there for the rent, leave enough in there to pay some bills that need paid that are also taken out and then the rest we live out of pocket for the month okay so what I have done is since one of my relatives was getting in my business and telling all these people that I was holding out money that people had given me on my mother I took a picture of the money and I sent it to each and every relative, along with my logbook of where the money came from, without names, because it's nobody's business. I know who sent it. And thank you from the bottom of my heart to each and every one of you. And I text my sisters, both of them, and my cousin, that if you ever have questions about anything, you can call or text me or my mother, and I will tell you. Well, right now... I can hear my sister in Spokane picking her jaw up off the floor. She's never seen a pile of cash like that. No, not in recent history anyway. And my other sister's like, I had no idea. So you know why? That's because you people are a bunch of gossips and a bunch of drama causers. We have one job, and that's to keep life normal for my mother right now. She can't handle being homeless, especially in the middle of Idaho winter. That's not a good thing for anybody. We'd freeze to death, no matter how warm we were. It gets cold here. And, uh, you know, I showed them the proof that the money was, in fact, where I said it was. And there was actually more there than I had originally thought because I'd been keeping track of it in my logbook, but I hadn't updated what I thought was in there because somebody else sent some. One of my mother's friends. Okay? So, the moral of the story is, when you have stupid people in your life that you cannot cut out for whatever reason, at least at the present time, there's only one way to handle stupid people, and that's to make them feel even stupider than they are. Because they are stupid. Back to the elaboration here before I had to shut this off. There were people walking through here. This is a busy thoroughfare. You know, I, I can't tell people what I did in my old life. It doesn't matter anymore. You know, those, those crimes died a long time ago with my old life and the rest of them that anybody knew about in the world died in room 1433. I'm a free man that way. You know, some of them I can talk about now, some of them I can't. But, you know, like I said, a carbine and a ski mask was proper attire for a lot of what I did. I had to do things to survive during the recession. It's how I learned what I did. You know, I don't have a background in military or law enforcement. Never have, never will. You know. But, you know, I, I was a common criminal for a while. You know, I had to do things to get by. I never stole from anybody. I never did things that were, like, morally irreprehensible that way. I had to do specific tasks to get the bills paid. 
and I treated it like a business. I left my feelings out of it. <sighs> had I been a dollar light on any count that I ever had from my old wife, I would have had bare minimum at least a hand cut off, if not my head. And, uh, you know, all those ties are dead. You know, all the people that I once knew in that old life, there, there's one that I still talk to. He's a good friend of mine, and he's a good guy. Like, if you're going to rob a bank, he's the one you want covering your back for you. My dad would be like the getaway driver. That's like my circle of trust. Well, the fun part is these people all know this, you know. They, they don't know the details, you know. Well, there's only one person in this world that knew the details, and he's not here to speak up anymore. I'm here to speak up for him. And uh, instead of, you know, having a, a little gossip session about me, they're not scraping their bottom jaw off the floor trying to figure out how I got so smart with money, how I got so smart in situations that are tricky like this, and uh, also how I've survived as long as I have doing what I do outside the system. We all are fringe element here. If we're doing things that the government doesn't approve of or that others find socially unacceptable, we're all on the fringe. And these skills are going to come in handy later in life. <sighs> Ways to basically use the community and collected power of a group of disenfranchised people. Leadership skills. Skills that matter, like violence. If you're left with no choice, those, those are going to be in a monopoly at some point. You know, they're going to figure out how to disarm and neuter a society. You know, America and uh, Czechia are the last two free places on Earth that way, and those are fast disappearing. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, out of everybody that everybody thought in life would go somewhere, it wasn't me. I wasn't destined for great things at that time. And I don't know if I am now. I feel I am because of what I've done with my life. You know, a lot of you know who I am, at least well enough to know what I do. And it's funny how the people you meet, you know, in your formative years and the skills you learn shape your entire adult life and prepare you for some of the most unexpected and horrifying situations there are. So it's always the person you don't expect. And even I wouldn't have expected me to have leadership qualities, and I sure as hell wouldn't have expected myself to be responsible. But yet here I sit. So food for thought for the day and a uh, conclusion to my extra salty rant.